Hey, what's up? It is the Man Fuse Podcast. I am Kay Lee, audio producer, voice artist, my co-host, Ben H. What's up, y'all? Real estate mogul? Tycoon. Tycoon. Really, I'm just a grinder, bro. That's He's a grinder. Truth. And we're not talking about the app. He's not no. on grind. No, I'm talking about the grit. Happy Thanksgiving week. I think uh, we all have a bunch of shit we probably are thankful for. A I would, ton. I would think. Well, um, it could be so much worse. Absolutely. You the know? elevator <laughs> does not stop on this floor. It keeps going down if it wants to. It could go up. It could go down. Yeah. I mean, and how low can it go? Well. You don't want to know. You don't ever want to know. You don't want to know. Um, so today on the Man Fuse podcast, we're going to kind of circle back and we're going to talk about the response to last episode with a um, listener of ours. Yes, who we, Charlie Brown. Who we dubbed Charlie Brown. We gave him that nickname. Yes, and he has responded to the um, segment. Which with, we appreciate. With love. We we're, love the dialogue. We're going to get into your buddy's dilemma that he's having. This is a tough one. With a neighbor in Florida. Yeah. Elon Musk is firing people left and right. Just pow, 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 pow. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. He Off is, the chain. He is cleaning house. Completely love it. Right. And Ben has made it a mission that he would like to fight wokeness. Well, I see wokeness being fought. Okay. And I so like you're it. not trying to fight wokeness. Well, I guess I kind of am. Yeah. We'll get into that. We did a segment last week where a listener, who we dubbed Charlie Brown, had contacted the show, said that in his relationship, infidelity mm -hmm. has actually made his relationship with his spouse. It brought him back to the one he loves. Stronger than ever. Stronger than ever. Like a bull. And we discussed this in the last podcast. Yes. Now, in his initial audio that we played, we both had different questions that were not quite addressed. With all due respect, he left a lot of questions to be asked. This is kind of a little behind the scenes. So after we got done recording that, before I posted the segment to air, yes, right. I did Charlie Brown the courtesy. I reached out to him and I said, bro, thank you again for the audio. We decided that we would play... Your audio. That's right. I just wanted to make sure that that was okay. Yeah, we had to I, get his permission. He hit me back, said, absolutely, my pleasure. I said, oh, yeah, by the way, I wasn't sure at the time of recording if I was able to use your real name. Came up with a nickname. You asked me a question. You said, give me one of your favorite characters from a movie. Right. Look, it's Christmas time. It's holiday time. We watched Charlie Brown at my house constantly during the holidays, so that was the first name that came to mind. So I said, hey, bro, we called you Charlie Brown. And his response... He wasn't a big fan of the, of the nickname. Well, I think... Uh, no, I think Of he, the alias. I think he thought it was quite funny. He said, laughing my ass off, <laughs> is it because I'm black? Oh... You racist bastards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> crying emoji, crying emoji, crying emoji. That is emoji. a pretty funny response. And I said, well, Doug. Yeah, shout out to Doug. I had no idea you were black until right now. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, wow. <laughs> LOL. Yep. I'm melanated and love it. <laughs> and I said, we love you regardless of skin color. I was like, I have to tattoo my body to get color. We love your melanation too, Doug. Since I don't have to call you Charlie Brown anymore. And because, as Ben pointed out, if I kept doing it now, that might be offensive. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to use your real name from the beginning, but I just didn't know. And I yeah. didn't want to go back and re-record. So, Doug listened to the segment and he said, first, all caps, I didn't cheat. Whoa. My wife and I are Polly. She is bi uh -huh. and has a girlfriend. Doug, you lucky you man, you. Bastard. Yeah, you are a <laughs> bastard. All right? It's you who's a bastard. He says, I have the option of getting a girlfriend, but I'm too lazy to do the search. The upside down pineapple thing is true for swingers. We're not swingers. Honestly, I feel like that was really good information that he sent. Would have been good to know that. We could have talked about that. I don't think we need to because he also says, I loved your input and agree with most of what you had to say. Ben, 
Doug's girl's got yeah. a girlfriend. That's I mean, pretty hot. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this is, you know, I'm going into it like reflecting my own thoughts based on my own relationship, honestly. You know what I mean? And in my case, you know, if that were to happen. You would have no testicles. Yeah. I mean, you know, and so it's it's one of those things where to know that his girlfriend has a girlfriend kind of opens the relationship up a little bit and makes it to where he's allowed to have a girlfriend and probably if he finds one hot enough they're attracted to he could probably bring her in too can the girlfriends of the girlfriends have girlfriends too i mean how many girls are we talking about here Doug? we're talking about a foursome here you and three girls bro i'm thinking this guy's getting new girls every week well he says he has that option but hasn't exercised it i'm talking about the girls that his wife and her girlfriend bring dude that's like a three-dimensional chess it's poly it's five dimensional, bro. It's different though, because Polly, meaning like another dude can come hook up with your wife. That's different than if your wife has a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but Polly is multiple partners, right? Is your wife allowed to hook up and sleep with other guys? Or is it just other girls? You know, I think it's an interesting conversation from that perspective because, in one sense, what we're talking about is Doug currently in the middle of two girls with an option for a third that's really what's going on here at the end of the day that does sound like a lot i'm sure he is tired he's probably exhausted are you kidding me he's like yeah i could do it but i don't even know if i have the energy to right i don't uh, yeah of course so the definition to a polyamorous relationship is people having multiple loving intentional and intimate relationships at the same time yeah it's an open or non-monogamous relationship that follows certain guidelines. Exactly. It's going to be there's different types of polyamorous relationships are going to have different types of structures and boundaries. and It's whatever you define. That's right. However you want it. God bless you, sir. God bless you, Doug. <laughs> and your wife. Yeah. Doug is a uh, beacon of representation for the Man Fuse podcast. Doug is is feasting like a king this Thanksgiving. <laughs> He's having the whole cornucopia at his table. Dude. He's exhausted. I mean, look at you. You got one girl. I'm exhausted. Could you take on it? I couldn't. There's no, no way. Like like those dudes out in um, Salt Lake City. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. The Mormons. Oh, my God. Oh, they got like five and six dudes. You know how women are. So your girl has a girlfriend. So the drama that happens between those two yeah. seeps out. Yeah. And affects your life. Yeah. Because think no, about they how- got, They got to live in the other wing of the house or some shit. Well, I don't you know even know that they I... live together. I mean, he didn't define that, Doug. He didn't say that they live together, but his wife has a girlfriend. Right. His wife but has a girlfriend. Yeah. Knowing what you know about women- Yes. And having to deal with a wife of your own- Yes. Can you imagine the drama that might happen between those two, which then- upsets your wife and your relationship with her. Well, see, this is that this is bitch. This, this is where I think that Doug has negotiating power. I mean, he's got leverage because at the end of the day, if his wife wants to have a girlfriend, which she obviously does, then he could say something like, "Listen, I'm cool with it. However, I'm looking for this to take the level of drama down, not up. If this is something that's going to complicate our lives and create a problem for me, I'm not cool with it, but if it's going to make my life easier. Like take some of the bullshit off of your plate. Right, dude. You know, <laughs> But I don't know if Doug's negotiated it out. He seems like a pretty smart guy. Well, but she could say, oh, it's going to be drama free. But you know how women are. Even if your chick is cool as hell, she's still dealing with another woman. Right? <laughs> you know how women are. <laughs> I mean, am I not right? Dude, for sure. I mean, we've all got our crosses to bear, right? <laughs> but, but, you know, <laughs> right. I'm perfectly happy with men. <laughs> but you know how women are. <laughs> right. I'm just no, saying. No, I understand what you mean. And not saying there's anything wrong with women. They are emotionally driven creatures yes. that respond and react to emotion. Constantly. Constantly. At a million miles an hour. Most of them. Not that logical when Different. emotions yeah. are raging mm. like a bull. Like a bull. 
raging like a bull. It's like a, you know, a guy is like very single minded, you know, we're just kind of one track. We're like a two lane road, Kaylee, with a dotted line in the middle. It's nice, easy sailing. We're enjoying the uh, surroundings and the passing by. Right. We could turn around and go the other way if we want to. There's no stop signs. Ooh. There's no traffic lights. And a woman is like a multi-lane, multi-tiered highway construction with ramps five and lanes ramps and ramps and bridges. And you know? Obstacles. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> if you know about Atlanta, it's like Spaghetti Junction Yeah, with stoplights. It's like 285. Yeah. It's yeah. a train wreck. Right. So, uh, and I mean, because it's like, oh, Ben, you know. I called you the other day. You didn't call me back. Oh, I guess he's busy. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> a woman, hey, I texted you the other day. She didn't call me back, that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing personal. I'm just busy. So, Doug. Thank you for enlightening us. Hope you feast like a king, my yeah, friend. Absolutely. Pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. <laughs> I'm going to pillage. He's pillaging. <laughs> he's, he's pillaging the pilgrims <laughs> on he's, Thanksgiving. He's mowing and towing. That's right. <laughs> All right, Ben. So you have a friend that's in a dilemma. He lives in Florida. Yeah. And it has to do with his wife? Yeah, man. This is a, this is a weird one because my boy, who he lives in the neighborhood that I grew up in, in Tallahassee. And it's a big neighborhood. It's right by middle school, and it's like, you know, nice houses, but it's a nice neighborhood, really nice neighborhood. It's one of those hoods where a lot of people are kind of the same age and the same place in life, and they hang out together, right? There's a lot of parties going on. There's a lot of get-togethers. It's just a very social scene in Tallahassee. My boy calls me, and he's like, look, dude, I don't mind if you talk about this. I just don't want you to say my name. He's like, I'm having a problem with this dude in my neighborhood. I thought this guy was kind of like a friend, and we have kind of been like friends, but, and I've seen him do it, he keeps hitting on my wife. He'll say something like, he'll comment on what she's wearing, or he'll comment on some aspect of her that's pretty, and it's just, it started out like kind of light, and it was just kind of like, oh, ha ha, thanks, you know, like whatever, but now he's like kind of hugging her and putting his arm like on her back. Most recently... My boy wasn't at a little gathering mm. that occurred at their friend's house. And dude, like, kind of, I don't want to say, like, he tried to hook up with her. He kind of, like, caught her in a situation where there was no one else around. He didn't, like, corner her or anything, but it was like no one else was around. And he kind of, like, propositioned her, you know, pretty hard. Wow. Like, hey, you know, um, I think you know how I feel about you. And if you don't know... I'm letting you know, and I'm wondering if this is a possibility. Basically asked if she was DTF? If she was DTF. Now, this flirting that has been going on yeah. and that's been building over time, so the dude that's doing it yeah. is married, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah, So has his wife picked up on so, any of these cues i that... asked that dude and um well i didn't ask it just like that i was like well what's up with his wife and he's like dude i don't know what's going on i don't know if they're like swingers his wife's been around when he was like saying things here or there sometimes apparently the past couple times it hasn't been that way first and foremost like his wife came and told him you know what I'm saying? Right. So, now, obviously, he, how else would he know? So, um, did he know about this as it's been building? Or was it yes. like the final straw and she's like, listen, I got to come clean? No. So, he's, he's known. He's been aware. And, it's, and, and, and that's why I asked him. I was like, well, dude, have you said anything to the guy? And he's like, you know, I kind of said something like jokingly one time. He's like, but honestly, I'm not trying to come off as like insecure. And I didn't really take it seriously. But now at this point, I'm kind of starting to take it seriously. And so I'm wondering what you guys think I should do. You know, do I kick his door down and skull drag him out in the yard? Do I call him? Do I text him? Do I go have a beer with him? Do I sit down with him? Like, what do I do now? My opinion, what should he do? Uh, bro, <laughs> you know, in his case, if it was me, there'd definitely be a conversation. It'd be pretty aggressive based on the fact that he propositioned the girl you think my wife is pretty because she is. I married a beautiful woman. My wife is freaking smoking hot. And dude, I see dudes looking at her and stuff. I, you know, I, you know, it's, it's I fine. Like I like yeah, it. I mean, guys dude, she's girl. hot. Like, of course, you know what I mean? Like, she's hot. But there's a level of respect. There's a boundary that was crossed where you're trying to say that what you want 
is to hook up with my wife and for me not to know about it. That's what you proposed. Now, does your boy have kids? Yes. How many? Two kids. Okay. That's the disrespect. I mean, you can have a sexual attraction to someone and have enough respect to never say a fucking thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I well, mean, we're all males and females out here in this right. wild jungle and all that kind of shit. But, dude, unacceptable, bro. So it's really funny that you bring this up because when you were describing the situation, mm -hmm. I was like, are you talking about me? Yeah. Because I have been dealing with almost the same scenario in my household. Really? Yes. I would have never talked about this. You do have that kind of neighborhood. <laughs> you so, guys are always hanging. You're right. The amount of young families with kids in my neighborhood now yeah. is we have taken over. And fortunately, in my cul-de-sac, almost everyone around me is my friend. Yeah. And our kids play together. Right. Um, and so we have the guys in the neighborhood, a group text yeah. that all the dudes are on. And that's cool. At any given point in a day, there's banter going yeah. on. Hey, are we that's drinking cool. in the cul-de-sac tonight? That's cool. I would have never talked about this on the podcast because this particular person, I know he has listened. I can't not bring it up and weigh in on this. Okay. So you have a similar situation. Almost identical. I love your neighborhood. Right. I mean, I'm jealous of your neighborhood. I'm friends with some of the people Absolutely. that are in your neighborhood. I love my house, but bro, this neighborhood's incredible. I couldn't weigh in honestly. Right. It's happening to me. Yeah. And the way I've dealt with it, to be honest, I, I really haven't dealt with it mm. yet. What is going on here? And I would consider this couple a friend. I don't talk to him every day. Right. I don't talk to him every week. We have been to multiple parties at their house. Sure. Holiday parties. Sure. Ever since my wife met them and we started yeah. hanging out, from the get-go, and I don't know if it's an alcohol thing. Right. Like when he's drinking or yeah. when he's drunk. Right. But for some reason- Lowers he, the inhibitions a little bit. He always seems to say the wrong thing. To your I, wife. Speaking his mind- and maybe he needs to have a little more so, of a filter. So first offense, yeah, right? I think, and I don't remember how long ago, year ago, whatever, we're at a gathering, and I don't stay. If we're at a gathering at your house, chances are I'm not staying till 3 a.m. I'm not going to be drinking till 3 a.m. You're 11 p.m. max. I don't do hard drugs anymore. Right. Very often. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to drink all through the right. night. I'm just not. Yeah. And so at some point, I'm probably going to go relieve my babysitter because mm. I got three kids at home, right. you know, and chances are my wife is a little harder to get to stop yeah. partying yeah, once she's a she party starts. Animal, right. Like me. When she gets going. No, I love hanging out with your wife, right. dude. She's awesome. Right. But when she gets going, she wants to keep going. Right. Sometimes to the point, babe, you're going to be sick. Stop. No, I don't want to. I'm confident. I'm right. secure. But I have left her multiple times right. at people's houses in my neighborhood where sure. they're partying because I'm like, I'm not going to be there till 3 a.m. Right. So this particular couple, it gets back to me that on one instance, you know, he basically says to her, I think in front of his wife, that she has DSLs, mm. which I didn't get mad at because. I mean, she does have nice lips she's she's very pretty right your and wife's she, very pretty. and she's got nice lips yeah so technically while kind of inappropriate i agree with that statement but i would rather say your wife is very pretty correct i'm not gonna let those words come out of my mouth right because respect for you and your wife right, and, right. you know i mean it's your wife i'm not gonna go there you oh know? they're so big and plump and <laughs> yeah, juicy exactly. oh man and when they're wet they just oh, <laughs> oh yeah you're not gonna say <laughs> right. that right okay fine he said that and I'm like, well, he is speaking the truth. She does. <laughs> right. No big deal. Right. But it seems to be a common theme that whenever I'm not there, mm -hmm. something happens to where he pisses her off, mm -hmm. my wife, in some way, shape, or form. Right. And I don't know if it's like one of those things like, I'm going to try to to neg her like, to the point, yeah. like a way of flirting would be right. to insult sure. or irritate. Yeah. You know, it's kind of that friction. No such thing as bad press. Well, there if is. you're mad at me or you're happy with me, 
It doesn't matter as long as you're thinking about me. Right. For some people, that might work. Okay, you want to be the dick. Yeah. Like, you want to be known as, okay, the dick that always says the right. wrong thing. Fine. Something has happened three, four times. I've never said anything because, you know what? First off, my wife isn't going to take no shit. Right. She can handle herself. Not Well, we know that. I couldn't even throw her in the damn pool. She will tell me what transpires. She's not going to keep her mouth shut. She right. will embarrass you. In front of everyone. I believe that. I mean, not physically, but verbally. Maybe physically, too. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't so. know. I've ignored this over and over, and I'm still friendly with the person, right. yada, yada, yada. But this last time, there seems to be a level of disrespect that was definitely crossed. Mm -hmm. It was observed by other friends of mine really? who live in the neighborhood. Now, I wasn't there. Something was said because my wife spray tans people for mm -hmm. a living. Mm -hmm. Another girl who yeah. is another couple we hang out with from time to time was right. there without her husband. Yeah. Somehow this particular neighbor, uh, because my wife sees people naked all the time, for some reason, <laughs> because she has to spray people. Yeah. So he starts going around basically spreading that my wife and this other woman... He was implying that they had hooked up. Oh, really? When she was being sprayed. Now, my wife takes her business very seriously. Of course. Number one, you're not going to go around telling people that I'm hooking up with my clients. That makes me look unprofessional. For sure. Right? What kind of reaction? That, like, that's just, are you wanting her to go, That's yeah. what you call stirring the pot. Are you wanting her to say, yeah, we did. You want to join? I right. mean, like, what, what's your what's your intention? That doesn't sound like that to me. So this happened after I left. But before I left mm -hmm. and said my goodbyes to everybody. Right. I gave him a, thanks for having yeah. me over. We were at his house. Right. I'm going to go relieve the babysitter. He looks me in the eyes and says, man, you are so secure leaving your wife here. Whoa. To be honest, I couldn't do it. If my wife was like, you can go on home, had to leave my wife yeah, here, right. you'd be like, no way. Right. I commend you. And then as soon as I leave, that one instance happens. And both of them were there without their husbands. At this point, because I went home. Because you went home, right. Then approached my wife, pointed at her lips again, but touched his finger to her lips. Dude, shut the fuck up. This is what, I, oh. is what I'm being told. <laughs> and then... Just like your boy, mm. what he said that this other neighbor did, saying that he was interested. Okay. My wife tells me that he said, hey, you know, if we weren't married, mm. do you think we'd ever have a shot? My wife comes in at like 2 a.m. and I'm already asleep. She wakes me up kind of because she's being loud. Maybe she's like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What what are you doing? Tripping over everything and well, slamming doors and going just, to the bathroom. Maybe just being extra loud so I get up. Okay. Then as soon as I say, hey, well, then it's free range for her to start unloading the events of the evening you on me. You confirm that you can hear her. And then she's like, oh, I'm so pissed off. And I'm like, yeah, why are you pissed off? Oh, this and that and this and that. And I didn't even get all of what had happened that night. It was witnessed by other people. Now... I don't know if his wife knows. Yeah. I don't know if she listens to this podcast. Now, I haven't said anything to him, thought about it. I think he knows because of things that other neighbors have said yeah. that he might have implied after the fact, like, and I don't know if he ever said, oh man, I kind of fucked up the other night. I think every time it's been on a drinking evening. Alcohol to me is no excuse. Ever. You can say you blackout drunk. No. I don't give a fuck. You still know what it is you're yeah. doing. And if you don't. You said what you said. And if you don't, then you've got a big fucking problem. I don't think I've ever been to the point as messed up as I've ever gotten where I still don't know what it is I'm doing. Right. I still know if what I'm doing is wrong. Yeah. I can still remember everything I've said and I've I've candy flipped. I've been I've taken LSD. I mean, I've done all that shit. He's highly experienced. Yeah, I've been there. I've done that. Right. But I still had your awareness. 
And not to say that you didn't do something wrong, but you knew you were doing something wrong Correct. when you were doing it, even though you were under the influence. Correct. And I've never used that as an excuse. I want to go back to the part when he touched her lips. What did he say? Something about how nice they were. My wife was like taken back, like, get your fucking hands off me. Don't touch me. After the rumor that he was spreading about my wife and the other girl, my wife was so mad She went and told his wife, your husband, I don't know what's wrong with him, but is spreading rumors. Yeah. I mean, she basically called him out in front of everybody. Right. And I did run into him on Halloween. Yeah. Our paths crossed. Okay. And I said hello. Yeah. But I haven't seen him. I haven't run into him. Yeah. Since, really. That one time was the first time I have saw him since this event, which happened like maybe a month and a half ago. Right. I'm the duck most of the time. I let shit just roll off my back. Right. Really, it doesn't matter. It still doesn't matter. None of the shit that happened that night, while disrespectful, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It makes me want to cut him off. Feel like I don't even need to say anything because he knows. Right. And if he listens to this podcast, then he's going to know that I fucking know. He's going to know that I know... (laughs) That everyone else knows. I don't need to say anything. My silence towards him. Here's what I told my boy in Florida. And it's crazy that the similar shit, but I think it does make sense because at the end of the day, you've been propositioned before. We've all been propositioned before. We know swingers. We know people that swing. We've seen the big swinger parties going on. It's married people with kids. It's families. And all due respect to that lifestyle, right? If that's your lifestyle, all due respect. And obviously there's a recruitment effort that's going to constantly occur there you know what i'm saying this is how you know some dude's wife ends up sleeping with the neighbor is that somebody takes the first step somebody makes the first move somebody says hey i'm interested in you somebody says well uh, that's disgusting and then it marinates for a little while and then they think about it for a little while and then something happens and you piss her off and then boom And I'm not saying that his wife would do that. I'm not saying your wife would do that. And I'm not saying you would do that or that any, my friend would do that. Because it goes both ways. Guys proposition girls, girls proposition guys, right? In my opinion, what I told my boy, does your wife want you to say something to this motherfucker? That's the real question. My question to him, did you ask your wife if she wants you to say something? Now, me personally, Bro, I got to be completely fucking honest. I wouldn't be able not to say something. That doesn't mean that I'm showing up in somebody's front yard trying to beat the shit out of them. But I'd say, look, dude, we're cool. We're friends. I've seen it. And it's been brought to my attention in multiple occasions, most specifically a couple weeks back or whenever the fuck it was. And here's what you do, bro. And here's what you did. And here's what the fuck you said. And I don't fucking appreciate it. I got a problem with it. And so I'm asking you to stop. Maybe that creates this whole nother level of drama. I don't know. Here's the deal. If he does it again, now now we got a real problem. See, once I've made it clear to him that I don't appreciate it, if he does that shit again, now we really have a problem. You don't know you have a problem until you bring it up that, hey, it's a problem for me, bro. It's a problem for me. It's a problem for my wife. Even beyond approaching him, letting him know that you know of what transpired, yada, 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 if you did say something to him, knowing that has happened in the past. Yeah. Do you even want to hang out with this couple anymore? I don't want to hang out with them anyways. I don't even know who it is that you're talking about. I might. I don't want to hang out with this guy anyways, based on the way you've described him to me and what's going on. Now, that being the case, maybe this is something he needs to hear. Maybe he's actually a really cool dude. Maybe nobody ever calls him out, bro. Maybe he's never been called out before. Maybe everybody just lets it slide. Maybe this is something that he needs to hear. Because what I would expect from one of my friends is for them to be like, you know what, bro? I'm so sorry, man. I have a problem that when I go past a certain point, I say shit that's on my mind without a filter. And you're right, dude. I'm so sorry, bro. Right. I, I, I swear to God, next time I do it, bro, slap me in the fucking face. Seriously, I give you permission right now. If I ever do that shit again, I'm sober right now. You got permission to just smack the fuck out of me, bro. I'm sorry for disrespecting you. Tell your wife I'm sorry. Dude, not in that context, but I've had to apologize before for saying things. Right. When I'm drunk, right. not as an excuse, but it lowers the inhibitions. It lowers the filter, bro. Yeah, no. You know how I get. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I've had to go back around and apologize to people, bro. And, you know, 
I don't even want to be called out. I don't even want that to stack. Like, if I know that I've done something that wasn't right somehow and I realize it, I'm going back and apologizing. Or it's been it. brought to your attention. It's been brought to my attention. I'd give him a chance to do the right thing. If you don't, I guess that's what I'm saying. If you don't say anything to him, you're not giving him an opportunity to show you who he really is and or do the right thing. Here's the deal. Now that your story has rung true. Mm, the Liberty Bell. This is his opportunity. Last I heard, he listened to the podcast. Mm. He knows who he is. If he listens to the podcast, which mm -hmm. kind of in the back of my mind also, if he did mess up, and I know he's aware of what he's done. Right. And if he was sorry about it, he kind of knew there might have been a line that's been crossed. Approaching me to apologize yeah. would have been yeah. the right thing to do. No doubt, bro. Hey, bro, listen, you know, the other night you were gone. I was wasted. I don't know why I was talking about your wife and this other friend of ours hooking up. And then after him telling me, man, I have so much respect that you're secure enough because I wouldn't be to leave my wife somewhere. I'd be like, why, dude? Then after he tells you that, then he goes and hits on your wife and touches her lips, bro. I'm just saying, fuck that. 100% words are a fucking luxury at that point, bro. Let me be there and see you do that shit. It wouldn't happen if I was there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't happen if I was I there. Mean, bro. But isn't that an interesting thought? That tells you something. If you act differently when your guy friends are around toward their wife than you do when the guy is not there. It's a problem. That's disrespect, bro. For example, your wife comes over to my house sometimes. I left her there not just the other night. There has not ever been one thing said. I treat, I mean, dude, I treat her like she's... Your sister. Your wife, bro. I treat her like she's your freaking wife. I take care of her. That's how it is. It could be anybody's wife. I have a wife, for goodness sake. It could be any woman. Right. <laughs> you know, like, hey, everybody, feel free to leave your women at Ben's. Like, yeah, he, yeah, I'm just saying, dude, it's so ridiculous. It's a preposterous a, thing. He said something to you and then went and said something to her I and mean, touched her. From what I understand. Everybody's drinking, having a good time. My wife doesn't take no shit. I'm surprised she didn't cold cock him. It's something that has been going on that I have not addressed. And I don't right. know if some might argue this isn't a way of addressing it. What is going to be said? And I couldn't sit back and go, oh, I'd go over there and beat his ass. Right. When it's happening to me and I have chosen the path of yeah. least confrontation. Right. Not because I'm scared. No. Because I not. got better shit to deal with. Nobody's fighting. I mean, we're, we're in our 40s. Right? I will if it's pushed to that point. Right. And if that's the case, then we just won't hang out with them anymore. Yeah. I won't leave my wife over there. Yeah. Because I know you'll be a pig yeah. as soon as I leave. Right. And I guess that's why you're so brave. Imagine if the real truth was told. Dude, you're super brave to leave your wife here because I'm just, as soon as you leave, I'm going to go in there and hit on her and talk to her about her lips. I might even touch her lips and ask her if we weren't married, if she'd hook up with me. That's what I'm doing as soon as you walk out the door. Thank you for being honest with me. And we probably won't be back. It's one thing to go to a bar and someone be extra flirtatious. Of course. And, and hit on your wife if you go yeah. to the bathroom. Right. You know, you do that move where you go to the bathroom, sure. you come back, there's a dude standing there it's like, trying oh, to hit on your wife. what's up bro i'm ben good to meet you yeah <laughs> i think it's funny when dudes try to move in yeah and they try to pull that move like they think they're gonna move in yeah. on her i appreciate it because they think my wife is hot right. and they think they have what it takes they're gonna make the move and they're just gonna get shot down yeah. which is even funnier right you might want to ice those balls buddy ain't gonna happen that's how infidelity happens someone cheated with in the, the neighbor. same neighborhood yeah right. yeah yeah, right. yeah. That's because how it goes like, down because you're always hanging out someone gets pissed off and is like oh someone's over there giving me the attention right exactly. you know someone was and they're me. drunk they use an excuse i'm sorry or they don't say anything and it just goes on and on and on for years and years and years right under your nose and you don't even know about it real betrayal murder you know the old phrase how long has this been going on it's a very important question pertains to people cheating on each other age old yeah, question. It's an, yeah this is <laughs> this is one of the great quotes of humanity yeah goes back to the pharaohs <laughs> how long has this been going on weeks is it a month long mistake is it a year past 10 christmas parties is that my child <laughs> yeah, right dude, that shit happens too i mean it's crazy
for me to be that blind. Yeah. And I'm not saying it couldn't happen. Of course it could. You trust, you know, that's what trust and faith and people can be tricked. People can be lied to, but, and that's when you betray trust and that's when you betray faith. And that's when you, without trust, there can be no love, dude. It's just humanity, you know what I mean? Like, it's just people banging each other at the end of the day. The problem is when you lie about what it is that you want or what it is that you're doing, you know? And that's the worst thing is for the person who's lying, they're living in the lie. That's painful, bro. You know what I mean? The swinger people are like, hey, you guys play? No? Oh, okay, cool. I mean, they're just being straight up about it. I mean, one thing if the neighbors came to you guys and were like, hey, by the way, you know, we're just wondering. And then you said no, and then it was never brought up again. What if they walked up to your door, rang the doorbell, <laughs> and just had the pineapple upside down out front of your house? Like, hey, I just wanted to bring you yeah. this. <laughs> well, it's such a weird topic, bro, but it's so relevant in our society today. And probably always has been. I don't know. I never was in any other society than in the one I am in today. It's humanity, dude. We like to have sex, you yeah, know? But... I mean, which gave birth to the porn, please bang my wife. What's that called? The cuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not the lifestyle that I'm living. Just I'm, be straight up, bro. Yeah. Just be honest. If don't, you want to bang me. this sneaky behind the back bullshit. If you want to bang me, then just say it, okay? <laughs> Give me the opportunity to say yes or no, no and move on. <laughs> right. And if I say no, no means no. <laughs> okay? Go find another. Or no means no, but you can ask my wife. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was under extreme pressure. Oh, my God. Dude, Twitter. Elon Musk. Chief Twit. What the hell is going on over there? Bro, he's off the chain. He bought Twitter, 44B, and took it private. Right. You can't buy Twitter stock anymore, bro. It's right. gone. It's off the exchange. It's a privately owned company now. He's cleaning house. He yes. has first bought it. He brought in the kitchen sink. He said, let this shit sink in. Right. CEO, you're out. Yes. Chief finance. I don't know if it was like the chief financial officer, you're out. Right. Fired some of the top execs, fired a bunch of employees. He issued a statement basically saying that if you're not willing to work long hours. Right. And, and come to the office. And come to the office and grind this shit That's out. It. Pack your bags. Yeah. It's private industry, bro. I it's, love that. Okay. But here's the thing. This triggered their whole Android department, packed up and quit. Let me say like what I like about Elon's just general attitude. You know, all of these corporations all over the globe, you know, you've got big corporations, all the big ones, Nike, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, like whoever, right? It's taken on this whole like woke ideology and this whole woke ideology, and it's fine, that's cool. But at the end of the day, it is weakening our society. It is lowering people's standards. It is the reason for the situations that we're in economically right now. It's the softening of our population, dude. It's, it's, and it's got me on my heels a little bit, to be honest with you. Right. It's got me on my heels, bro. I'm in a situation where I cannot believe that this many people feel this way kind of a thing. And then to have someone like Elon come in and do it the way that lines up with kind of the way that I feel and see that happen on such a big public level. It's why I like what Kanye did too, bro. Even though I don't agree with what Kanye said as it's being portrayed, I still like what he did. I like it when people stand up and speak truth to power with regard to individual sovereignty and the sovereignty of whatever it is that they're doing. Elon has the right now to fire people. He has the right to look at it as a business and not a publicly traded company with shareholders and corporate interests and government contracts and all these different things that dictate who, what, when, where, why you can say what. He wants public discourse, open public discourse, which I think is so brilliant. I saw this the other day on TikTok. It was freaking hilarious. Check this out. So... I just fired all of the crybaby liberals working at Twitter because I wanted to do it <laughs> yes. in a fun way. So I had my intern, Tyler, create this app called Barrett that uses artificial intelligence to clone voices. <laughs> okay, what is this? Omar, you're fired. Jack, you're fired. Tim, you're fired. <laughs> For him to say I just fired all the crybaby liberals at Twitter, that is like somebody do a victory lap.
that. But what's happening, so after this ultimatum that he gave yeah. on Wednesday, basically giving people the option right. to participate in this new hardcore yeah. Twitter approach right. or get out, hundreds of people opted right. to take their severance packages yeah. and walk while he came out on Thursday saying, oh, I still have all the right people in the right places to make things happen. Some of the departments and engineers that overlook key things to keep Twitter Mm -hmm. moving Mm -hmm. are almost all gone. Yeah. Which raises the question, it's kind of like an appliance. Things can run without those people for a certain time, but the second something happens and you don't have the staff there to complete it, Twitter is shutting down, even for a temporary period, which does not help its value. No. I mean, the guy's building rockets. I mean, you think he spent $44 billion, even though it's not all his money. He pooled it, got investors, yeah, yeah, exactly. smart. He didn't spend his own money, he other people's money. Just like OPP, Me. just ask my neighbor. Yeah. That's what he wants. <laughs> I would like to think he didn't borrow money so he could just tank this social media platform. Right. That I would think he's wanting to add value at this point, because I don't know the master plan. From the outside looking in, I just don't see the strategy up to this point. And and maybe that's fine. Yeah. He doesn't want me to see the strategy. Right. I don't know what he's thinking, and I don't know what his end result is, what his goal is with this platform. You know, this is a guy that invented PayPal. I think that ultimately, Elon, as an entrepreneur, he has a vision. And this is somebody that has is obviously willing to do whatever it takes to bring his vision to reality. And one thing about having a vision and executing on a vision, you can't do it alone. But you also need the right people. You need people who are in line with your vision and see the same vision and can work toward that vision as well. And the truth is, if you set standards which you know are going to be unacceptable to the most of these people who don't share your vision, are going to probably opt out, especially if you push them in this other direction, which is going to make them uncomfortable, which, by the way, is how success happens. It's called being uncomfortable. You You aren't going to get to where you want to go by being comfortable. Yeah, versus, so he can do that as a strategy to get rid of of all these people that he doesn't want there that don't align with his vision or hey give them an opportunity to prove him wrong you show up at the office work 12 hours just tell him you like hardcore let me know (laughs) hey what's your vision do you align with this you know what i'm saying i've never been a fan of soft core porn i I really (laughs) like hardcore i mean i'm right there with you buddy you know what i mean though it's like bro i've got a real estate company right people come to me all the time say they want to get the real estate license they want to sell real estate i've brought so many people into this business bro and i've trained people who listen to this podcast who are very successful running their own business and their own companies in real estate. Those are the people who showed up at the office and did the work that I was doing. I just said, hey, here's what I'm doing, bro. You can do it too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'll teach you how to do it. And I'll answer any questions you have. And 99% of that is prospecting, 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 it prospecting. All every advertising, every ad you see that's prospecting. Every letter on a billboard is prospecting. It's print. It's visual. It's digital. It's voice. It's in person. It's video. It's in person. I mean, that's all prospecting. It's marketing. I mean, marketing is prospecting. A lot of people have the most trouble. Mm cold calls on the phone sure. and the cold calls in person. Of course. But if you take those two elements out, you've got a very limited area of prospecting. Well, and there's ad spend, right? And so we can get into all that stuff. We could talk about the real estate business. What I'm saying regards to Elon is I think that I think he's giving people who align with his vision the opportunity to opt in and the people who don't align with his vision the opportunity to opt out. And honestly, I don't think he really gives a shit if everybody leaves, dude. Because he's Elon Musk. If he announces that he's hiring for his new Twitter gig, bro, you think people aren't lining out the fucking door to get a job at this place? If it pays right. Or you just align with the value. Like I'm saying, I don't like the old Twitter, bro. I hated it. How is it, even if you're not a President Trump fan, how is it that Trump doesn't have an account? The guy that runs the freaking ISIS and the Taliban and the president of Iran who just said he's executing 15,000 political political prisoners. He's got a Twitter account, so he can have one. But former president of the United States can't have one. I mean, bro, the way they were canceling people, it was politically motivated. It was the left agenda. And that's fine. 
But that's not fair. That's a vacuum, dude. It's not an open dialogue. When you prevent, when you cancel people, you turn their voice off. Dude, you can't do that. The mom who said that she doesn't want trans education in her child's third grade classroom at a school board meeting is canceled and investigated by the FBI as a domestic terrorist. That is garbage, bro. And that's what the old Twitter was all about. Bravo, Elon. You're going to have to come to the office and earn that shit. While he's getting bashed, what is he doing to Twitter? He's destroying it. I'm with you, though. (laughs) If you don't think this is part of his plan, it is part of his plan. I I think it's 100%. He's executing his plan. You just don't know it's his plan. How do I get rid of all the people I need to get rid of? Without me having to come out and go, everyone's fired. He's giving them the opportunity to step it up. That's your new boss. And guess what? It's a private company. He's the owner. He's cutting your check. It's like one of my mentors says. He says, hey, Ben, you know what? It's a lot of people signing the backs of checks, but not very many people sign the fronts of checks. It's a different Mm. mentality. Which one do you want to be, guys? You want to sign the front or sign the back? That's right. I want to sign the front and the back. (laughs) I do, too. (laughs) When I'm making the checks out to me. It is a different mentality, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, here at the Man Fuse podcast, we write the front of checks. It's a different mentality. I like the fight against wokeness. I like how he's taking it to the woketopia. And he just did the same thing with SpaceX. Yeah, he just canned a bunch of people there. I hope Mike Wallace still has a job. He's good, bro. Yeah, he's, so. you, you can't you can't replace I think his Mike wife, Wallace. I think his wife would kill him if they just moved down there and he got fired. I hope everybody out there has a great Thanksgiving. Be thankful. Spread the love. Enjoy your cornucopia. Give thanks to the bounty. Hey, you can listen to the Man Fuse podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Also, you can join the show by hitting us up at manfuse.com or by texting or leaving us a voice message at 770-744-5227.